Welcome to Employment Law This Week. I'm George Whipple. Two recent actions from the NLRB show a continued pro-employee push. The agency took on dress code policies at the end of last month, with a decision that restricts an employer's ability to prohibit union insignia and other messages and logos on employee clothing. This not only overturns a two-year-old Trump board decision, it also expands the types of messages that are protected. And the NLRB's proposed joint employer rule, published last week, would widen the scope of liability for labor law violations and would bring franchisers, temp agencies, and other labor suppliers to the bargaining table along with their franchisees and clients. The proposed rule would scrap the current direct control standard, instead defining a joint employer as any company with indirect control over employees, even if that control is not exercised. California's Governor Newsom celebrated Labor Day by signing the controversial Fast Food Accountability and Standards Recovery, or FAST Act, into law. The act creates a government-appointed fast food council to monitor and establish minimum wage standards and other working conditions at fast food restaurants in California with at least 100 locations across the country. The legislation authorizes an increase in minimum wage for state fast food workers of up to $22 an hour. California legislation is frequently a bellwether for the rest of the nation. While the new law was swiftly met with a proposed referendum to reverse it, unless the referendum effort collects enough signatures by the deadline, this law will go into effect January 1st, 2023. Also in California, the state legislature passed a bill dramatically increasing pay transparency regulations. The bill follows places like New York City, requiring employers to include pay scales in all job postings. But California's bill goes a step further, requiring employers with more than 100 employees to report the hourly rate for each combination of race, ethnicity, and sex in all job categories. This requirement also extends to employers that retain more than 100 workers through labor contractors. The report is similar to the EEOC's Component 2 data requirements, which the agency has indicated could soon be reinstated. The California bill applies to employers with 15 or more employees, making the state law filing requirement applicable to a much broader set of employers than those required to file an EEO-1 report. That's it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.